Welcome to the Sanford Edible Garden Trail. So I'm wondering if you recognize the background because we've actually been to this property before. Uh, we've got dragon fruit and pineapples and that's the clue. And of course the other clue is that we've got Colin right next to us. So we're actually visiting Colin and Marianne Baker again at their amazing, your amazing property. The, la yeah, the last time that we came, we focused on what sort of one part of the property because there was so much to see we did a video on the driveway and then we looked at the orchard the orchard which has over 250 fruit trees yeah. subtropical fruit trees and 80 bush tucker trees so if you haven't seen that you can go and check that out but we've come back today because we want to focus on the other side of the house and we're going to have a look today at your amazing aquaponics setup that you've okay. got yes and which is right near the house so we can also have a bit of a squeeze at your raised garden beds and then there are two other like kind of surprises that i didn't even know were here one of them is a solar dehydrator that you've yes. recently set up yes and for any it people out there wait to the end of the video because we're going to show you the it person's version of gardening okay Okay. Would that be a way to describe No, that, that's fine, yes. <laughs> okay. All right, so lots of things to cover. And um, let's start. So thanks, Colin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. So um, Christine's filming today. Thanks, Chrissy. Let's start by just getting a bit of, do you want to just take a shot of this like amazing setup here? Right, this is the undercover aquaponics setup. So we go in colour. So what, what we've got here from a, a macro perspective is that we've got aquaponics. Do you want to have a look through that? This a recirculating system. We've got fish tanks filter, uh, sump pump, uh, which pumps waste from the fish tanks around through these uh, aquaponics raised systems. And uh, all of this then drains back through the sump pump and the system recycles itself again. So the basically the fish are providing nutrients to the system and uh, the plants are growing in the nutrients and cleansing the solution. Yeah. And then it's all just recycling, recirculating again. Okay, we're going to go in and have a look a little bit closer. But is this, a, is it a closed system or is it an it's, almost? It's an almost closed system okay. in that the fish are herbivorous. And um, I, I use a little bit of fish pallet uh, okay. in with them, but it's essentially a closed system, yes. Okay. Other than perhaps electricity to run it, but uh, all of that is solar anyway, so it's not off the grid. All right, this looks amazing. So um, let's go in and have a quick look. We'll duck underneath the passion fruit vine. Yeah, watch the passion fruit vine. It, it came up by itself and <laughs> got so many passion fruit it fell off the roof. So yeah, I'm. That looks. <laughs> look at the passion fruit. <laughs> I wanted to have a look at that, Christine. I can understand why you can't pull this out because you can't pull out a passion fruit that's this laden with fruit. No, that will have to stay there for now, unfortunately. <laughs> but okay, so you've got what is it four or is yeah, it three? Yeah, we've basically got four fish tanks here. Okay. They're, they're conventional food grade IBCs, uh, about a thousand liters each, and um, they're lined with builders film here around the outside. This is just to keep the light levels down so you don't get as much trouble with um, algae builder. Okay. Um, so the fish are in these. Uh, use jade perch and we can talk about the benefits of those uh, later on. There's about 25 ones that are six months or so old in these front two tanks here. They're, they're about this long and um, there's 25 each in the back tanks, uh, about two months old, so they're about this big. Um, so what happens here is that the water from the tanks has a collector inside it, drains back through some of this plumbing, through what's called a swirl filter down here, 
Um, what happens here, the solids drop to the bottom of the system and can be taken out manually through this tap. Okay. And then there is a, a filter assembly here, which then filters the water, which goes back out into a sump pump down under that piece of uh, board there. The, the sump pump um, then runs periodically. As it fills up, it automatically runs, pumps that water back through the tanks, and also pumps it around through the aquaponics trays here and here. Um, the solution then is collected in the header pipes at the end of the aquaponics and then drains back to the sump pump here. So it's a, a pretty much a closed system. The plants will transpire a little bit of um, water during very hot days. So uh, top up water is required. And to do that, I'll, I'll show you the systems later on. But I have an automatic system which, which works out when uh, top, top up water is required in the system. It'll automatically inject top up wa uh, water into it. Okay. And then conversely, if we get a lot of rain, obviously the rain will collect in, in this part of the system here or even through, through the plants. And the system uh, has too much water in it. And so it'll automatically work that out and then bleed off the amount of water so that it, okay. it runs stably. And this automated system, this is uh, <clears throat> what we're going to look at later. Yeah. So you're not going to, I can't, I won't spoil it, but it's, wait till you see it. That's all I have to say. Okay. Um, okay. Let's look out here and I'm going to ask you a little bit about the plants, but let's go out to this section. So, that in itself was amazing to see, but as you're saying, then the this fertilised water or liquid then comes out, and you've got this section yes. here. So, can you just show us a little bit about how this works? Like, what can you plant in a system like this, and what are these? Big Chris, you can okay. see these little beads, and well, the yep. first the troughs, the water goes into the troughs, so the troughs have have liquid in them which flows through them, you can see the liquid there, flows through them and out the header pipe there. So there's, okay. there's uh, liquid in the system most of the time. The plants are in these little aquaponics pots, which essentially have clay balls in them. Um, so we, we don't grow seedlings, um, uh, small seeds in these. We, we transplant seedlings into them. And the clay balls basically uh, collect a bit of the nutrient for the plants as well as hold them up. There's the roots of the plant, and this is a relatively new plant, so it doesn't have a lot of roots. Some of the bigger plants here will have a root mass quite large. So it's holding it up, um, clay, um, Colin, because there's no soil in there. There's no soil at all, yeah. no. Okay, so that's what the clay balls are for. Correct. It's just a physical structure. It's, a, it's physical, yeah. and I guess the, they do absorb some of the nutrient and uh, keep it nice and moist for the for the root mass in there as well rather than just being in the in the solution and what have you tried growing here like what's growing well i can see um, you've got some little types of lettuce leaves and i did see you had some rhubarb in yeah, there the, we've we've tried lots of things we've tried rhubarb uh, basil grows quite well we had a lot of lettuce growing here um, uh, that, are, that are finished now. You might see some remnants of them down there. Um, um, silver beet, the um, kale, spinach, you know, any, any plants like that will grow quite, quite well. Okay. Now, all, all of this is only about seven months old. So obviously we're still learning a lot about it yeah. as we go. Yeah. There's heaps of information on the internet, but um, you know, you've got to make a few mistakes with all yeah. of this as, as you go. And what's your motive, like, to set something up like this? What was, is it just because you like to try different things? Like, we already know you've got all this amazing, you know, produce here on your property. But what's the appeal of the aquaponics? Well, it was just see see if we could get it going. And um, I had the chance to uh, get a fair bit of this aquaponics trough. Um, 
just for the uh, cost of disassembling it. So okay. I, I got that. And, you know, most of this is, is quite cheap to put together, the IBCs. You know, there's a bit of expense with, um, with pumps and whatever, but most of it's a DIY type yeah. um, stuff. Okay. And, um, you know, the byproduct is some reasonably healthy yeah. plants here and um, fish yeah. out, out of the aquaponics or the mm. hydroponics. Yeah. So eventually the idea is you can also eat the fish, right? Yes. But, yes. Yeah. So it's producing the fertilizer yeah. and it's also a food source. Yeah, we use jade perch, not not because I'm an expert on them, but they were recommended from the point of view that um, they're very easy to manage. They're herbivorous, so they mainly eat, um, um, in their natural environment, will eat algae and weed, uh, creek mm -hmm. weeds. And uh, they like duckweed, so there's quite a bit of duckweed in the system, they, they, will, they will eat that. I do actually give them some pellets as well. Yeah. Um, but they, they will eat an amazing variety of things. I think there was one article that said anything that a, that a chicken will eat, uh, jade perch wow. will eat. So um, they will eat lettuce. They really like cos lettuce. Um, they, they will eat mm. pumpkin leaves, uh, sweet potato leaves. Um, so you're just dropping it right just yes, into the top? Yes, into yeah. the top. They don't, uh, they don't really like silver beet um, okay. for some reason. But, um, <laughs> Uh, They're fussy. They like um, fussy fish. They like homegrown organic silver beets. Not doesn't cut it for them. No, um, they like real mushy banana. They okay. they will absolutely rip that apart. But other than that, they 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 come from the Baku River system, and um, so they they're a very hardy fish. Uh, they'll tolerate wide varieties of pHs, wide varieties of temperatures. Okay. And. Um, they just really haven't been um, any strife to look after at all. We had a, a few casualties early on and it's probably because we put them in a bit too early and the system wasn't um, established enough. Right, okay. But, so but there's I, a learning curve there, like there, with anything. There, there's yeah. a learning curve yeah. with any of it. Well this is an amazing setup. I was looking forward to seeing it when Marianne told me that it had, it had finally kind of been put in and this is an incredible hmm, effort. I, I think that you know, there's lots of people doing this sort of thing, yeah. and, and this is just my version of yep. it. So, well, it looks amazing. I'd like to work our way down here because there's a few things to have a look at. So let's make our way this way. Okay, so uh, Chrissy, we're going to come back to this, um, but this is the solar dehydrator. Okay, but just before we talk about this, we've got a little guest who's coming on. Millie, come over this way. So this is the raised veggie bed, which is right next to the entrance to the house. So it's a perfect location. And we have, who's behind me here? We've got Millie here, who's gonna come and show us her garden. So let's come this way. So I'm a big fan of having uh, the kids involved in the garden and I thought this was the first thing we saw when we came over. We saw that you'd set up this garden and I was wondering what you've got planted in here. I've got radishes, carrots and tomatoes. Radishes, carrots and tomatoes. They, have you ever grown anything and then been able to eat it straight from the garden? No, they haven't all grown yet. They haven't grown yet. No, these ones are all pretty small, really? but really? they will grow you up pretty big. And yeast. Oh, so last year. What did you grow last year? Carrots. <coughs> carrots. Oh, carrots. You grew lots of carrots. <laughs> <coughs> now, I've got a few questions for you. I saw, what's this? Did you go and pick this earlier? <gasps> yeah, it's not from my garden though. Yeah, it's from your granddad's and garden up there, isn't it? Yeah. They look yummy beans. And what was this you were telling me earlier? Is this like a secret ingredient that you water your garden with? It's in this watering can. Um, it has cow poo and... Cow poo? Yeah. Really? Is it like a cow poo tea? Yeah. Wow. Can we have a look at that? So... 
Ah, there we go. So you heard it here first. The secret to Millie's garden is Granddad's cow poo tea. Thank you. <laughs> and we did actually look at this amazing setup of the cow poo tea last time. So you can go and have a look at that video. And I have one more question for Millie. I noticed that these amazing overalls have got a little pocket there. And when we arrived, we saw that there was something in this pocket. Can you show everybody what it is? An egg. What a perfect pocket to go and collect the eggs. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many chickens your granddad has? Um, there's one pen up there, one, uh, five in that one. I can't remember in that About one. About 12. About 12. Yeah, 12. Well, thank you. That's a really important job going to collect the eggs. Thank you for showing us your garden. You're doing a really good job. And I want to get some overalls with a little pocket like that. Perfect. So let's have a look, Colin, about this solar dehydrator. And then I'd like you to show me this IT influence in your garden. So what is this? This is actually, for anyone who's been following the trail, you will know that this is the second time we've had the privilege of seeing a DIY solar dehydrator. David and Chrissy, uh, we went to visit their setup and um, here we go, I'll step out of the way, but right. can you um, show us what this is? And well, it was inspired by David's work up there, so it's yeah. got a lot of his ideas as well as uh, uh, some of mine, and there's heaps of stuff on the internet uh, about this as well. So basically what it does, and today's not a very good example of the day because it's completely overcast, but there's a trough here which is a, a solar collector heat exchanger. It's got some holes in the bottom here. It's lined with uh, builder's roofing film um, to reflect the heat that goes in back onto this black wire mesh that runs in the middle of it. There's 10 um, layers of very fine black mesh there. So what happens is through natural convection of uh, heating up of the air, air enters here and it, it has to traverse, because this is at an angle on the side of the trough, the air has to traverse all of this heated black mesh before it exits in two, two little holes in the bottom of that. So the air heats up, mm -hmm. comes into the solar dryer, just get past here. And now th this is just, ah, just a bar fridge. Check it out. Um, Looks like upcycled bar fridge. Upcycled bar <laughs> fridge. So the, the hot air enters through here, through these vents, goes up, drying anything that you've got on the trays and exits uh, through a fan here. The natural cycle will in fact drive hot air through it, but it's also got a, a solar panel, a regulator and a battery box here. So when this, this is a little like a fan forced oven, so to speak. So the, these fans draw the heat through and you can feel, even on a dull day like this, you can feel the heat there. Oh yeah, yep. And um, so the heat comes in and then out that, out that fan there. Uh, we've we've so, done... Yeah, I mean, you're growing a lot of food here. So what, what have you tried to uh, dry so far? Um, we've done banana, pineapple, uh, dragon fruit. The um, I've actually done some Panama berries as well. Um, oh, wow. they're, they're quite prolific and you generally end up with lots more than you can do anything with. And they, they sort of are a bit like a sweet currant once you, once you do them in this. But you could basically dry, you know, anything that you yeah. can dehydrate. Yeah, I know in. David and Chrissy, who we filmed before, said pineapple was their favourite. Yes. And Marianne gave me a, an example here of banana, like, which is yummy, that you've... So you've dried it and then you freeze it to keep it. Basically, to keep the ants out of it. Oh, to keep the ants yeah. out of it. And the... So, 
even with these smallish bunches of bananas, like you can see, you out see there, all the bunches behind yeah. us. Un unfortunately, when they ripen, they pretty much ripen all all together. Yeah. And um, you end up even giving stuff away. You end up with far more than you can use. Yeah. So, so it's uh, good to run it through and dehydrate it. So that's a pretty good problem to have that we would all really aim for, right? To be able to grow so much produce that you have enough for your own family, you're giving it away to others, and you still have enough that you can then dry and you can store. Mm. That's awesome. Okay, so this is a really good um, setup here with your um, right next to the house. It's really easy to access all of your veggie gardens. So we're gonna just take the opportunity to pop inside for a moment because what we didn't realize last time, but we've discovered this time on this visit is that Marianne and Colin have actually automated their garden. And so let's just explain what I mean by that. Okay, so when we arrived this morning, we, we arrived to see this up on the screen. We're in aquaponics and we were like, what is this? And then we discovered that, this is where we discovered that not only is your aquaponics system that you've created a program, you've automated it, but also all of the sprinklers are on a system. So, okay, over to you. This is for anyone who likes IT, right? What have you done here? I guess the, the aquaponics is just part of general automation here. Um, the, all the power, the hot water, the electric fence, the tank pumps, everything is automated around here and it's all part of one system. So the aquaponics is just one thing we'll look at today. And um, while the aquaponics system will run by itself in its own mode, it doesn't necessarily run optimally then because um, as I said before, Excess water will throw it out of balance or, right. or, um, or needing water on hot days. So this automates the whole process and rather than me having to run out half a dozen times a day and check it out, uh, the algorithms in it automatically work out when it needs to bleed water out of the system or when it needs to add water to the system. Okay. As well as uh, alerts if the pump's not running properly or the aerator okay. fails. So just... So that just basically, very quickly, the um, a good example is um, the blue line is basically the fill times of the sump pump, and the red line is the sump pump running. So we can look we can look at today, the whole of today, which is um, uh, quite quite normal. It uh, th there's no challenges with any of that. All we can look at averages over the last 24 hours. There's a spike here and there's a real reason for that. I, I reset the system there. Okay. The, the sump pump itself, we can have a look at it running. That, so today, last six hours, last hour. So that, that just shows when the pump was on and off and that it's working fine. And uh, Similarly, the, um, uh, the main AC aerator, that's when it's running. The system does has, have a backup DC air, uh, aerator as well, which will come on if needed. Okay. And um, this is it adding automatically the top up water to the system. Each of these little spikes is it adding, uh, that's a bit on a 24 hour period. Yeah. So you can see yesterday it added top up water at all of those times when it found it needed it. It's, it's done it four times today. Wow. Including I... half an hour ago. And um, that in itself is amazing. But over here then, can I, I mean, we could spend, clearly we could spend a lot of time just looking at this. Can we um, have a look? Marianne showed me her, what's, what's, this. Welcome, Marianne. Morning. So you told me before, this is where you look at recipes, but what's the other thing that you access from, from here? All the sprinklers. All the sprinklers, right. All the sprinkler systems from here <laughs> for the whole property. So you can run them as a full multi, each, okay. each yeah. exact one, and you can um, set each one up for a certain number of minutes. Or you can re um, set one to go off. 
turning on north sprinklers for 15 minutes. Oh my goodness. So then if you turn around, you should see. Oh, is it out there? Should be. Yeah. The sprinklers come on. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Look at that. It takes a while for the water to pump through. There was a few second delay. <laughs> Maybe that could be tweaked a bit, right? No, that's just filling the pipes. Oh, filling pipes, okay. Marianne, while I've got you, keep coming over this way. So this is where we're going to finish our um, amazing tour of the one little part of the garden that we're looking at today. And so we're inside and this is, what do you call this? The garden wall. The garden wall. Okay, so it's the indoor garden wall. And before you turn it on, oh, it's oh sorry. Go. No, that's okay. I was going to say, what's... This was the dream, right? You've been when you built your house. You said that you built it around having this garden wall. Yes. So the so the um, pipe in the bottom of it, this wall up here, which is all got um, special backing on it, and it's also done with uh, waterproof paint. And, okay. and this was all done as part of the this this area, and in here was all done as part of the house built. Okay. With with the idea that this was going to go and the tiles on the yeah, okay, so it was planned when you built the house. Yes. And I know that these plants are relatively young because you yes. did you put them in just before Christmas yes. Yes. as a birthday present for Colin. Yes. And you've got herbs down the bottom here. So at some point, this is going to grow and just be absolutely flourishing. But this is, wait for this. Do you want to turn it on? It's also a water feature, okay? So let's, this is it. So not only is it automated and all the plants get watered, but it's this beautiful sounding. And apparently at night you said that the, all the reflections are on the wall. Oh, from the lights. Oh, that's right. Sorry, can you put the button? Come on, the button. I can't do not push the right button. There we go. Wow. So that's it. How many years was that in the making? Like. Oh. For you. Well, the plan was there, right? The plan was there. Yes. The plan was there five years ago, and then you made it happen at Christmas. But these are all these are all the herbs that we actually use in the kitchen. Yeah. So you, you can come along and get your mint and your parsley and your coriander and your basils and things like that. Uh, there are some extra ones outside because, of course, that's not going to be enough. Not the yeah. Of cooking I do. Yeah. So let me just say thank you very much once again sure. for having us at your property. And it's, um, for coming. it's such an inspiring place. Now, Marianne and Colin, we're so fortunate because yours is one of our, our nine properties uh, that we will be having open to the public on our upcoming inaugural open day, which is May 16th, 2021. And uh, we'll have nine properties that are open. So you can buy a ticket and you could come and have a look at all these amazing things that are done on the property here and be inspired like we are. So you can uh, check that out on our Facebook page and you know all of the usual things, our website, and um, hopefully we'll see you on our open day. So in the meantime, I'll just say thanks very much. Keep following us on the trail and we will see you at the next garden. Oh, thanks again, Good. Millie, and thanks, Charlie. Thanks. <laughs> all right, bye. Bye.